Hello, this is Jolly, and today Tony's feeling a little under weather, so he's not with us, but this is still table ready. So Tony will be back with us next week, and we're going to explore probably, oh, uh, well, we've got a few options. We're going to look into possibly Shatterpoint, if we can have things ready in time for that, since that'll be the brand new amazing game out. But for today, we were going to do Gaslands, but being just me, I'm not going to try a solo game of Gaslands. Instead, we're going to have a short version, a shorter episode of Table Ready tonight, where I'm just going to discuss kind of getting things, once again, table ready. So, the big thing I have going on tonight is I have brought some Gasland cars here, which you can see. They're in various states of being ready to be played, and my newest one right down here I was, that I was going to play tonight, I brought to show it off. Now, I don't have Chad in me. I don't, I mean, I'm a little, little uh, weak on words today. So, Clay, if you could do me a favor, if anybody in chat has any questions, let me know, because I forgot to bring something to be able to explicitly look at chat today. But what we're going to do is just spend about 30 minutes looking over how to prepare a car for gas lands. And these are in the different stages of preparation and finishedness. And I will show you these. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about different paints that you can use if you're like myself and not an amazing painter. So to kick things off, Gaslands. Of course, Gaslands is considered a model agnostic game. It's where you just take whatever matchbox cars or matchbox size cars you have and you play a game with them. Uh, it, think of it as twisted metal of your familiar with video games, but not as familiar with this particular tabletop game. So you get a car, you strap some different weapons, uh, hardware, crew onto it, and then you do different things such as death races, demolition derbies, different things like that. So you have lots of different game modes. But since it's motto agnostic, there won't be any particular lines out there that are made for the game itself. So. What do you do if you want to play Gaslands and you're just not sure how to get everything ready for it? Well, first thing I want to let you know about is make sure you purchase the rules. The rules are Gaslands Refueled is the most recent edition. You can buy them at your local friendly game store, or if you don't have one available, you can go to guardtower.com, theguardtower.com, and you can, be able, you can purchase it from them online. But it's a book about $25, $35, somewhere around that price point, depending on where you get it and what condition it's in. But that's really what you need to play. That'll contain your templates, your rules, and everything else that you need. But how about the fun part of the game? The fun part of the game, in my opinion, besides playing it, of course, is creating your vehicles. So that way you have your lineup, your crew, your posse, whatever you want to call it. Um, and what I have here, as I said, are different matchbox or Hot Wheel cars that are in different states of being ready for the game. Right here at the end, I have one that's just new out of the package. I haven't done anything to this one. As you can see, it's got the glossy Hot Wheels matchbox paint on it, and it is still completely together. Now, you can, of course, play the game with just these if you want and say, this, thing, this red car of mine has a machine gun on it, yada, yada, yada. But I, this is a really easy game, to be honest, to modify your cars to get them to where they're looking ready for the game itself. Now, if you'll notice here, the one big thing I want to point out that was a game changer for me is this one, the one I made, still has the glass in it. And I primed this and painted this and everything. You notice that that glass, the the chrome on the front and everything is still in good condition as uh, as I wanted it to be because I wanted this to be kind of a ni nicer, shinier car. Um, so how would you do that is the question. You could either be really, really careful of how you paint, but we're talking about me here, and painting is not my strong suit. So to let everybody know, what you can do is on the bottom of your car, and this will be all Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars, there are a couple of rivets. You can see one here and one there. If you take a power drill with a drill bit that is made for metal, these are metal rivets, and have the drill bit size just be barely bigger than the rivet is, 
you could drill those out and then it'll pop open. Now, this is what it looks like when it's drilled out. You can't really tell by quickly looking, but the rivets aren't there anymore. And what you can do is just take the car and pop off the top. Any glass or windows that's in it, sometimes seats will come right out. And then you've got your portion right here ready to glue stuff onto and then prime. Now this one, as we can see, I've already done some work with. I have glued a, and I am not very good at car vernacular. I am not a mechanic by any means, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I've got a turbo booster thing on the front. Don't know if really that's what it is. I've got a, what, it is, what this is, is a Necron 40K gun. I just used bits. I had to add guns. I wanted some sort of sci-fi looking gun. And a little satellite dish on the back. So this is one that I'm working on for a team called Michigan, and they're in the Gaslands lore. Michigan is all about technology on their cars. So that's what this one is going to become. It's all ready to be painted, and now that I've got it primed, I can just paint over top of it, however I want, and then just reassemble it by putting the glass back in, like so, and then reattaching the bottom. And a lot of times, it'll just snap back on like we heard it do right there, and it'll be good to go. It's not gonna fall apart at this point. But if you are worried about it falling apart, all you have to do is take a little bit of super glue and put a dot of super glue where each of those rivets were, and it'll hold it in place perfectly just there. So that is the basics of how to take one of these apart so that way you can make yourself a car. So we start with this, like I said, we drill out those rivets, we pop off the top, we glue anything we want to the body, we can paint it, such as a quick paint job like this, which was just one quick, really not good coat of yellow. And I'll put it over on the little side cam here so you can see. Actually, I'm gonna move the side cam a little bit because that way we can get them both on camera at the same time. But as you can see, this one's not the best paint job, but it worked for what I wanted. I just wanted something that looked dirty and grungy, metal plates on it, stuff like that. Once again, a bunch of 40K bits, bits from a Sentinel, if you know Imperial Guard, that's what this front part is also. Some machine gun bits from an actual Gasland sprue called Implements of Carnage that you can find. And then I just put it all back together and I have this car. Now this one I went even easier with. I didn't even pop this one off of the chassis, or yeah, off of the chassis. What I did is I just took some sandpaper, scratched up the paint some in certain spots, I painted it over top of them, and I glued my weapons and pieces of hardware onto it and painted those. So I went with an even, even easier one here where I didn't even paint the entire car, but it's ready. Now this last one, this is the one that I prepared for today um, with what we were gonna play with Gaslands, and this is what I'm gonna play next time. This is one that I completely took apart. I attached everything, I primed it, and then I did some experimenting with some uh, contrast inks, express colors. So I'm gonna go over a bit of what all those are here in a minute. But I blended it from the yellow to the orange to the red at the back to get this look, which I'm very happy with considering I'm not much of a painter. So this car took me maybe an hour and a half from taking it apart to putting it back together in its finished, uh, in its finished self. So these don't take a whole lot of time to do. The longest one I've spent has been this monster truck here, which once again, it did the same thing. It was a little harder getting to the rivets on this one. They were, this one was easy to get to. There was another one up front that I had to kind of fit around to get to, but I got it off, painted it. This one took maybe three hours total, and that's largely because I just didn't know what I wanted to do with it. I added a mini gun on the front, which could be a heavy machine gun, one facing back, just because I wanted to try something different. Uh, put some metal platings on it different places, all kinds of stuff. 
So this is a really good game if you just want to have fun with making something that you then get to enjoy putting on the table. Now, I assume, Clay, that we don't have anything in chat at the moment. Mr. Hello. Well, hello, whoever said hello. Glad that, glad that you're here. Next week, we'll be back with more full-fledged games on Table Ready. So, I have talked about, really quickly, being able to take these Hot Wheel cars apart, being able to reassemble them, paint them up how you want, and attach your different pieces of weapons, equipment, hardware, and all of that. And I mentioned contrast paints, express paints, speed paints, which if you're in the hobby, you will know what those are. If you are new to the hobby or just not well-versed in painting, such as I have been up until the last few months, I'm still not very well-versed in it, but I am more familiar with it, uh, let me introduce you to the three types of paints that I'm primarily talking about. So what we have here, there are three companies that do three types of speed paints that you should be able to find in your area or easily find online. Once again, go to your local friendly game store or theguardtower.com and you'll be able to order these products. There are some other inks and speed paints out there as well that work, but these have been the three that I've been working with and that I like for different reasons. There is speed paint by the Army Painter which is this one right here. Let's see if we get that. That's Plasmatic Bolt, it's a green. There is Citadel Color Contrast, which are by GW, and this one's a Dark Angels green. So these two aren't the same type of green. Uh, they will be different, but you can get colors in all these that are really similar to each other. And then, just very recently, Vallejo has come out with an express color paint. Now, the three of these work a little bit differently, and I kind of like each one for something slightly different. Now, for the new car that I made here, the one that I'm going to call Balefire, that's going to be its name, it's a Michigan team, I used the express paints for that, primarily. I did use a little bit of uh, Citadel green contrast to give a little bit of a glow effect on some of these items, which is tough to see from the camera, but if you look at it closer, there's a very slight glow effect. But it was these express colors that I used for this. And the reason I wanted to use them is because I don't really know how to blend colors very well when painting. And the nice thing about these express colors is that they will take a while to dry. They take longer to dry than either the speed paints by the Army Painter or the contrast by Citadel, which is nice for when you want to blend them like I did. Um, I was just toying around with the idea last night, had no idea if it worked, but it turned out pretty well. It's not Golden Demon well, but I have to say I'm pretty happy with it for being a fledgling painter. But I just started with the lightest color, yellow in the front, painted it back to about here, switched to orange, blended in some of the orange while the yellow was still wet, painted orange to about halfway, and then did the same thing with orange to red to the back. And it worked really well, and it was really easy to do with these because they take a while to dry. Now, the thing to keep in mind with these express colors is they take a while to dry. So you want to be careful of how much you apply because it'll they will run off the high points of the model really well, which is nice. That's kind of what you wanted to do, so that way it gets down in the crevice. But if you use too much, you're going to end up with big pools of this color, where I haven't had that issue really with the contrast or the speed paints as much as they dry quicker. So there's not as much opportunity for them to pool. Now for... For skins and for these cars, I've been liking this color, but for completely flat surfaces, I have not liked the Express color as much. Uh, I find that the Citadel contrast paints work a little bit better for the flat surfaces, though a lot of experienced painters, and I completely believe them when they say this, uh, Tony's one of them, say that contrast just don't work very well, or inks or any of these Express colors don't work very well for flat surfaces, which makes sense because they're made to basically go flow into crevices to add some different tones of color. But I still like these ones a decent amount 
for skins, for flat surfaces. I like these ones more. And the Army Painter ones, I am the least familiar of these. So why am I showing you all these other than saying that you can buy them and then use them for these? Well, what we're going to do as a small part of today's show, since today is a brief show, is we're going to try these different types of paints out on these four spiders right here. So I'm gonna move some stuff around, get a few things ready. And what we're gonna do is I have some primed spiders that we are going to paint up really quickly with just these different contrast and express paints. So what I have here, these four spiders, I have them all primed a Wraithbone white primer. So when using contrast paints, a lot of times you'll want to use a lighter primer. It doesn't have to be the Citadel Wraithbone, could be just a white. Uh, but this will let the paints, the contrast the inks, the express paints, kind of show more than if it was on a black primer. Though this is just, once again, coming from the guy who doesn't know how to paint very well. So what we're going to do is let's take these spiders and let's paint them up with, we've got a red, we've got a red, and we've got a red. So we've got three different reds. They're not the same type of red, but they will kind of show us how these work. So for speed paint, I've got blood red. For the contrast, I have Blood Angels Red. And for the Express Colors, I have Plasma Red. And we're going to paint up one of these spiders in each of those completely. Just go over it to see how it looks with just that contrast on it so we can compare how they kind of coat these chitinous looking spiders. So these spiders have a lot of bumps, spikes, grooves on them. So... They should be pretty interesting to see how they come out. I have not painted any of these yet, so this is going to be a complete surprise to me as well. But what we've got here, I'm not a fancy man. I've got a paper plate, not a wet palette, because I'm not skilled enough to worry about a wet palette. I have a cup with just water in it so I can rinse my brush. And I have paper towel to just keep things in check and to wipe off my brush. So I'm gonna just set up things here real quick so we could go ahead and work through this little experiment to show everybody how these turn out. So we'll start with the Citadel contrast. Now the one thing that I like about Army Painter and Vallejo Express Paints more is that they come in a dropper. I recently really liked droppers more because then you could just put out the amount of paint you want and you don't ever have to dip your paintbrush back into this, which when blending colors, I found out not having to dip your paintbrush into the pot itself is nice. And I have not thought to up until this point to look up ways to maybe get paint out of the pot without a paintbrush. But we're going to start with this one. What you want to do for all of these is make sure you shake them up really well because there will be different, uh, it will separate in a layer, which you don't want it to do. You wanna make sure all the pigments, everything in the contrast or express color or speed paint is mixed together. So you'll wanna shake it up a bit. It's also the one nice thing about these droppers. I know this Army Painter at least puts a metal ball inside their droppers, which lets it shake better. The Express Vallejo paints, I feel like there's something in there too, but I can't quite tell. But I shook these up a bit before I got here, and we're going to see how things work. Now, I do really like this Blood Angels red color. I have used this before for other stuff. Um, I don't know if I've used, I don't think I've used it for every, anything that I have here, any of the cars I have here. But I have used it for some other models. What I typically like to do with this is I just get a decent amount out on whatever I'm using as my palette. Close this and set it off to the side because otherwise, like last night, I was working with non-oil. I've so far in the last couple months spilled two bottles of non-oil. For some reason, 
I was holding the whole thing up like this, painting the car body because it was tough to keep a hold of. And for some reason, I just suddenly did a one of these and I lost the whole bottle of non-oil, um, luckily onto the table, not the carpet, uh, but I lost basically the whole bottle of non-oil. All right, spider, let's go with you. We're just going to quickly paint you up. So the nice thing about these contrast paints is you just kind of put it on, move it around. The big thing you want to be aware of is not to do too much to it once it starts drying because that's otherwise when you get splotches. So let me hold it where we can see. We're just going to continue to get some and we're just doing a a pretty hefty layer where I'm going to try to spread it out some but also make sure everything's getting coated on the spider's Clay, any idea what this part of the spider is called? This is not, is this the thoracic part of the spider? I don't remember. It's been so long since I've been in biology. Any idea? That's the tip, I believe. But I, like I said, I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I've had to name the body parts of an insect or an arachnid. It's not even an insect, it's an arachnid. I should say that before anybody happened on this on YouTube or Twitch gets angry at me. But yeah, not 100% sure on that. Thorax? Thor I, I was thinking maybe thorax? That's the best guess I could come up with at the moment, but I'm not 100% sure. But we're just going to try to get a layer of this red all over this model. So that way we can see how it looks. Now, what you can always do, and I've done this a decent amount, is this will basically take the place of a base coat. We prime it, we go over it with one of these inks or contrast. Let me move this up a little bit more so we've got a better view on this. And I then will do some detail painting over top of this. But if you're just looking to get things table ready, namesake of the show, this is a good way to get some color on something. Um, all of my orcs that I played last week on here are painted almost exclusively with contrast paints. Just because I found out, I found a way to make it work for the orcs really well. Uh, da, da, da. Now the awkward thing about this spider is that he doesn't have a, he's not on the base at the moment, so I can't keep a hold of just his base while I'm painting him, so I'm gonna end up with red fingers too. So if you're ever want, if you're brand, brand new to the painting and you're wondering how do you paint something like this without getting paint all over your fingers, a lot of times you'll either have them glued to a base, a round base, a square base, any type of base, or you'll sticky tack them to a base and then there are little handles that you could get that the base will fit into so you can hold on to the handle which makes steadying it while you're painting a lot easier. Um, I have several of those at home, but I didn't have time to put these on bases tonight, so I figured we'll just go with getting paint on my hands. Now I'm putting this on pretty thick on its, on its front here, but I'm going to spread it out more. I might be going a little thicker than what a bunch of people would like on this, but I really like it when it, a lot of it soaks into those grooves. Gives it more of a cell shaded look, a uh, comic book look, which I tend to like for a lot of my models, but use less if you want. Now, I know there is, have you ever used, I'm talking to Clay in the other room, so I'm gonna be yelling to him a little bit and then kind of let you know what he says. But Clay, have you ever tried the slap chop method before yet? Yes, I What do you think of it? Okay, so slap chop is a method that you can look up. It's basically you prime black, you dry brush heavily a light gray over top of that black, and then over top of that light gray, you lightly dry brush a white. And it increases the number of highlights you could end up with after using a contrast. But it's also something that I've had mixed results for myself. 
I've had some models where I've really liked how it's turned out, and I've had some where I've not been a big fan of. So, but that's something you can always try out, experiment with it once again. A lot of the paint, a lot of painting that you do will be just experimenting to see what works for you, depending on your skill level, what you want your models to look like, and things like that. And this spider is getting really tricky now that I'm getting down to where I have nothing to hold on to and there's wet paint. So we might leave a couple of his legs unpainted at the moment, just so I don't end up with fingerprints and stuff all over him and we can move on to the next one so we can compare them. So as you can see, I'm a little bit of the antithesis of the way Tony paints. Tony is kind of like what Clay just described, which you probably couldn't hear since he's in another room and he takes his time Tony knows what he's doing when it comes to painting. Um, he's very good at it. I am not as skilled, and a lot of times when I paint, I paint with the goal of get the models done and ready for the table. Um, so I like the fast methods. So we're gonna leave this guy like this at the moment. As we see, he's starting to get some paint on fingers. Uh, so I know some people wear gloves. I don't have the bother of gloves. I just wash my hands afterwards. Um, but we've got one spider contrasted up for the most part. And this is with the Blood Angels red. I'm going to wash my brush real quick. And then we're going to go on to the next one and we're going to use this Army Speed Painter Blood Red. So how to clean your brushes is also something that I recommend everybody look into. I am not the most knowledgeable on this as well. I just wash them in water and then lightly towel them off. This might make some people cringe if they actually know how to do it a proper way. Um, but I just go for what gets them clean. And the one big thing is if you ever start painting, make sure your water cup for your paint is different than the one that you're drinking out of at that time so you don't accidentally drink your water your paint water all right so that brush is clean enough next we're going to go to the army painter the speed paint blood red is what we're going to go with next for the next spider shake it up and like i said i really like these droppers because i can just whoops that one's that one was a little clogged i got a bit more than i wanted and that is really dark, but we'll see how it turns out. Oh, that's interesting. I kind of like the way this is looking so far. So let's see. This looks a little thinner than the contrast paint, but as we can see, I accidentally squirted out way too much of it. Um, so clogged, um, clogged bottle, be careful with it if you're squeezing too hard. Well, let's paint over top and see how it goes. Now this one has more bubbles in it right off the bat. So that's not my favorite thing, but I might have been, I, I might have worked it too much already. We're going to apply it. It definitely feels like it goes on a little thinner or it's a little more wet, but I know army paints tend to be thinner so it all depends on what you're looking for. Some people like the control of adding thin layers at a time because it lets them do more with their painting. For me, it doesn't matter because not good enough at painting. But this is going on pretty well also. I might be using a bit too much of it compared to the contrast paint because that's the other thing you'll notice is that these paints, the three types of paints, all work a little bit differently. They're the same concept, but you'll learn there's a little bit of variance in how to best apply them. But overall, this is going on a little easier than the contrast paint, but it's got more bubbles in it. So we'll have to see if those bubbles go away before it dries because otherwise those can leave some splotches or just not great looking spots on the model. I'm 
We'll see. And this is also the one that I'm the least familiar with using, is the speed paints. So I might not be applying the best either. I'm just applying them the same way that I've learned to apply the contrast in the express paints. So if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're in the chat right now and you have used them and there is a better way to apply them than what I'm doing, let me know. Let everybody else know. Share your, share your knowledge. That's one of the things we want to do on these little hobby segments that we do for the show is just kind of give everybody a way to best prepare for the hobby, how they feel comfortable. But yeah, this, this one's going a bit quicker than the other, but as we can see, these overall are just very quick. I've almost got two spiders done minus a little bit of their legs just because it's, like I said, it's hard to keep a hold of them and completely paint their legs. couple spots that I missed on the bottom. Get that, get that. And yep, I think we've got that. All right, so now, as we can see more red, you know, that does look like blood. <laughs> so we'll clean off the brush one more time and you can clean off the brush in the same cup of water up until it just gets so thick that nothing actually washes off. And then we are going to go on to the last one, the express color, the plasma red. And then we'll take a look at them and see how they look. Now there will be some difference between how they look when they're wet and how they look when they're dry. So we'll take a look at them all as soon as I'm done with this one to kind of get a look how, get an idea of how they're looking as they're drying. But then we'll come back to them in a few minutes. All right, so once again, shaking it up. This is the Express Color by Vallejo Plasma Red. We're going to try not to put as much out on the plate as I did for that because I squeezed it a bit too much. And as you can see, that dropper was not clogged, so it worked a bit, so it worked a lot better. All right, spider number three. Let's get to work. Now this one, these ones do look, they're, like I said, they go on more wet, I feel, but they're also thicker than the other two. But they flow a lot more, so as you're putting it on, you'll get this, where it looks like it's just one color, but it will flow into the gaps a bit more. We'll take a look at all three of them, and we'll decide, I've not, I've not painted any arachnid or insect chitin with these colors before. So we'll see which one looks the best. So that way when I paint up this dark elf spider army for blood fields, I know which type of paint I want to use for it. So we're going through, painting them up once again, going on really well, really smooth. That's one of the great things about these paints. Not, not difficult to apply. Biggest thing is, as you're applying them, make sure you got enough that's not drying as you're applying it, but not so much that you're having puddles of it on your model. And this one is looking a little bit brighter than the other two. At the moment, that army painter is looking pretty nice, but it does have bubbles on it that are leaving some splotches. The Citadel contrast is darker overall, but I can see it being a good base coat if you want to paint more details over top of it or dry brush over top of it. Uh, got that. All right, so Clay, do we have anybody in chat? Tony Cass said he's sorry to see you alone tonight. That's all right. Tony will be back next week. He's just, everybody has days where they feel under the water. But thank you for tuning in tonight, Tony's dad. One day, one day I will learn Tony's dad's and Tony's mom's names. So that way I can refer to them by their names instead of just Tony's mom and Tony's dad. <laughs> but all right. This one's definitely looking a lot brighter than the other two. But like I said, it's a different color of red too. This one's called a plasma red. 
where the other two were more blood reds. You should be able to get colors that are close to matching, regardless of which brand you go. So I know Army Painter has color matches to Citadel colors. I don't know if Vallejo goes that far with their Express paints to color match, but their normal paints I know you can color match too. So we'll have to see. This one's this is this would be a nice color for a crab if you wanted a nice red crab. We're almost to that point where we could start taking a look at stuff and see which one we like more. So while I'm finishing this up, a couple things I want to let people know is it is and getting towards an exciting part of the year for gamers. Uh, some gamers, those who particularly like tabletop miniature games, have already gotten to have some fun with Adepticon, which is a convention that pretty much kicks off the miniature convention aspect of the year. Um, Clay, you went, you went to Adepticon, right, Clay? So Clay went to Adepticon. He got to experience this year. I've never gotten a chance to go to Adepticon myself, but I always hear great things about it, and I always want to make it to it. But there are other conventions coming up also that are, I, would, I have to say, uh, this might be some points of contention, but I have to say Gen Con, I still think is the greatest tabletop or board game convention ever. I've not been to... Um, Essex in Europe, which is bigger. I think it's the only one that's bigger. But from what I've got to experience and what I go to every year, Gen Con coming up in August is an amazing convention to go to. And it just so happens that uh, Table Ready will be going. Tony and myself are going to be presenting at Trade Day which is Gen Con's kind of education day for retailers and educators and librarians. We're going to be presenting on how to use games to build up a sense of community. And we'll be doing that. And then we're going to be at Gen Con enjoying it and possibly doing some daily updates on stuff that we find that we think is awesome. So if anybody's going to be at Gen Con this year, definitely hit me and Tony up. We would like to play some games if we've got some games in common that we enjoy and or just otherwise hang out. Now, some of the Guard Towers program um, stars, is how I'm going to put it, will also be at Origins. Um, Tony will not be at Origins, I know, uh, but the cast and crew from... The Doom City of Granite Guard, the Sunday RPG, will be there. So if you are interested in learning more about role-playing or meeting the cast and crew of that show that we have on Sundays, Origins will be a great place for that. All right. We've got three spiders painted up. I'm going to turn them all to face the same direction, and we can start taking a look at them. Ooh, okay, good. He didn't get any extra paint on them. So that way we can kind of see what we got here. So, I'm going to try and get it set up so that way we can see what we've got here. All right, might be a little bit tough to tell here. They're all, the darkest one is definitely the contrast one. So this is the Blood Angel contrast. Um, I think it's, I probably put a little bit too much of it on there. It pulled a little bit too much, but I think it would make a really good base if I wanted to highlight over top of it. The Army Painter one's right here, and it is definitely thinner. I probably could have done with more of that on here. Um, but overall, it's it leaves a nice lighter red. And then the Plasma Red, the Express Paint right here is much brighter. And it actually has less, 
I have to say, less contrast the way it looks. So we're going to, can we autofocus? I don't know how to autofocus. Does it autofocus, Clay? Yeah. You got a little down the picture button on top. Picture button on top? Yeah. There we go. So this is a better look at them right here. Once again, we've got the Blood Angels, the Blood, uh, Blood Angel Red contrast. We've got the Army Painter Blood Red speed paint. And we've got the Plasma Red Express paint. Kind of tough to see, but this one's definitely the brightest. So if you want a nice bright color, this seems to go on the smoothest and brightest. And of course, that's what I use for blending those colors on that car that I'll show off again here in a second. This one's thinner, so I haven't used the speed paint too much from the Army Painter, but it might be good if you have colors that you put underneath of it and you want this to be kind of like a wash. And this one's the darkest one that definitely has the biggest differences in the pits and the rises. The pits are a really dark, almost black red, and then the rises are a lot brighter. Kind of tough to see there, but as we see, those are the three of them. How you apply them. Let's take a little bit closer to see if we can. There we go. So quick paint. Now, how would you improve upon these? The way I would improve upon these, since they're spiders and I wouldn't want to put a whole lot of time into painting them, is I would just then dry brush a color over top of them. So maybe like a blue or purple dry brush on the back part of it, maybe a little bit on the heads, different things like that, just to make certain parts stick out and add a little more color to it. But other than that, in the little bit of the legs that we didn't get painted, those are some spiders that are pretty close to being table ready. So, once again, quick show. Just wanted to show off a couple things real quick. Really, I wanted an excuse to show this off. So, there we go. So as we can see, blended color nice back there. This is probably my pride and joy as far as gasland vehicles go at the moment. You will get to see this in work next month when we come back to Gaslands again. Name's Balefire. But now that I got to show that off, and show everybody a little bit with the differences between the different types of speed paints or contrast or express colors, and then also how to very easily disassemble and then create your own cars. But that's really all we've got for tonight. Just a quick little impromptu show um, to say we are here this week. We are still table ready, and we'll be back with a full game next week. But that wasn't the, that wasn't the end, Clay. I know that sounded like an end. I said, oh, I was thinking about that. I just wanted to see, are there any questions that we have from anybody? Nope? All right. So next week, what we're going to try for is Shatterpoint, Star Wars Shatterpoint, the brand new Star Wars skirmish game. Clay's played a game of it. He says he likes it. I am excited to try it. I'm picking up my core set this weekend. I'm gonna get it put together. Um, Tony has almost all of his models already painted for it. And we're gonna give that a shot next week. What we're gonna do then next month is revisit Gaslands so we can play the game that we were going to play tonight. And we're also going to see what else we have. Um, but we will release the full schedule within the next week for the month of June once again. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. I apologize we didn't get to a game tonight, but sometimes that happens. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the little bit of information I had to part upon you, and we'll see you next week. So once again, this was Jolly. Tony will be back next week, and as always, this is Table Ready.